All right, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining tonight's event. Um, we're so excited to have Dr. Arslan here, who um, will be talking to us about the Raindrop Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us. So excited to have you. Um, before we get started, I'd love to talk a little bit about Dr. Arslan. Uh, he actually relocated to Austin back in 1998 to pursue a PhD at UT Austin within the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, where he uh, later served as the adjunct professor. Beyond academia, he plays an active role in the interfaith community as a founder of the Dialogue Institute of Austin when he's not engaged in his primary role as a distinguished engineer at Silicon Labs, specializing in designing chips for the Internet of Things. He dedicates his time to several nonprofit organizations, having previously served on the boards of Interfaith Action of Central Texas, IACT, and Raindrop Foundation Austin and Leadership Austin. Presently, he does hold the position of chairman for the Board of Trustees at North American University, and in his personal life, he is a devoted husband and father to four children between the ages of 10 and 20 years old. Thank you again for joining us, seriously. Thank you for having me. Uh, I actually have a few slides. Can I share them? Absolutely. We're really excited okay. to see what you have for us today. Uh, I am not allowed to share, apparently. Oh. Can you make me co-host or something like that? Yes. Give me two seconds. There we go. Is it working Let for you now? Know when you I see this. Yes. Perfect. Yep. Is it up? It okay. is. So to start talking about uh, Raindrop, or I'm going to talk about Hizmet, and I'm going to uh, explain what that means. So uh, let's see. Is the Hizmet movement. That's the name of the group that uh, I belong to. And uh, Hizmet is just a Turkish word, uh, or actually an Arabic word, that we pronounce this way, uh, meaning service. So the service movement, if you want to have it all in English. And uh, to tell you the story, uh, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the Republic. I, I promise it's not going to take 75 years, uh, but uh, I'm just going to summarize it in a few, couple minutes. So all we need to know is that when the Ottoman Empire collapses, the, the new Turkish Republic was founded by uh, by mostly soldiers from the Turk, uh, from the Ottoman army who were all educated in France. And they come with this background of uh, the French model, which is, uh, I don't like to use the word secular here, but that's the word that we have in English. So staunchly secular, uh, in other words, the way they understood it was state-controlled religion. Very nationalistic. Basically, it's all about Turks. Uh, uh, after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, which was multinational. And uh, this establishment is uh, almost anti-religious, if you want. Uh, they're blaming religion, uh, the backwardness of the country, the collapse of the empire, everything on, on religion. So uh, the early on, uh, the, the oppression comes to a point where Arabic is forbidden, there is no azan. Uh, you act, people were in the villages would actually bury their Qurans uh, underground uh, and dig it up at night to read it because anything any Arabic script was forbidden to uh, to be in possession of. Uh, this is a ninety nine percent Muslim country. Uh, it's uh, probably hard to understand. Uh, it's hard to understand for me at this point, but that was the rule. So at the end, where we. Turkey kind of ended up uh, in kind of two parallel societies living in the same country, but not really sharing much. The ruling elite, which rules everything, uh, so the government, the military, the, the, the police, uh, the education system, uh, the economy, the media, uh, everything is controlled by the, these, uh, by this ruling elite. And the rest of the people, the regular people, uh, 
lost a living in their villages, some in, in cities. Um, they are basically just uh, there. They don't participate in any of this and uh, are practically any, any uh, alienated. So the Anatolian Turks, Anatolia is the lar large, largest part of Turkey. It's uh, basically all the part in Asia on the Asian side is called Anatolia. So we call them the Anatolian Turks. The, the real heartland, heartland people uh, are basically not participating. And uh, this is kind of the situation of, of which, uh, uh, in which uh, in the 1970s, uh, uh, well, maybe I should take it backwards. Uh, let me go by slide. So that's kind of where we are with the Turkish Republic and that's the situation in Turkey. And uh, during this time, and uh, Sait Nursi is a, probably still today the most influential Muslim theologian scholar uh, in Turkey still to, to this date, uh, who died in the 60s and in 1960. So he lived through the, uh, the, the early Turkish Republic, late Ottoman Empire, so World War I, World War II. And during all this time, uh, especially towards the second half of his adult life, uh, he focused on altering what we today call the Risale Nur collection, uh, which you which can see behind me. This is this is it. Uh, it's a it's a series of books, uh, and uh, it's a spiritual intellectual revival with the goal of uh, spiritual intellectual revival of Islam. Uh, he was worried that people, especially with this materialistic worldview coming from the West, uh, that's what changed the, 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 the state. So now we have this, again, staunchly secular state, and there is a top-down pressure coming on people uh, from the government, which, again, wants to switch to Western-style uh, national country uh, that's made for Turks. Uh, and... Uh, People don't know what to do with this. And uh, some of them are basically starting to diverge from, from traditional values or, or faith traditions. And uh, Diagnosis starts writing uh, about how we can reestablish or iman or faith. Uh, another key point of Diagnosis, he keeps repeating, is the compatibility of science and religion. He keeps talking about uh, God giving us two books, the holy book, the Quran, and then the universe. And uh, science is the language of uh, the second book, the universe, uh, which we have to read uh, as much as we have to read the Quran uh, in the Arabic form. We also have to read this other book, the universe, uh, by using science. And both will lead us to the creator. Uh, we will have a better understanding of God. Uh, so that's kind of the main message. Uh, he has been, uh, initially he was part of the system, but then uh, as he become more and more critical of, uh, of, the, uh, of the system, especially in the, uh, during the uh, Republic times, he uh, is being persecuted. Most of his life he spent in prisons or in uh, rural villages where he was, uh, uh, kept under, under under control, but he managed to write all these books uh, by hand and then uh, get them out to people and people would uh, basically uh, rewrite them or dis uh, make copies of it and distribute it and then people would read them. And one uh, key point we need to take away from Saitnosi is he defined three problems uh, that plagued humanity, ignorance, poverty, and division. And all the other problems in the world he saw as uh, stemming from these three issues. And he was advocating uh, solutions for these. Ignorance, obviously, you eat by, with education. Poverty by uh, sharing and charitable work. And division, and the, the division uh, kind of has different dimensions. Uh, division within Muslims, for example, division within humanity. Uh, this everybody for themselves mentality instead of uh, taking care of each other. So that th that type of division, whichever way you define it, uh, would be 
solved or that problem would be addressed with compassion and dialogue. So that's where Psychonosy left with this huge work and uh, of uh, deriving from traditional Islamic values. And again, this is all Sunni uh, tradition from uh, and Psychonosy being Kurdish was on the Shafi uh, tra tradition, most Turks are on the Hanifi tradition. But uh, he 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 defined, he basically uh, laid down the groundwork, which then uh, the next person I'm going to talk about, uh, which is Fethullah Gülen, uh, he's currently the probably the most influential living Muslim scholar uh, in Turkey. Uh, he, he lives in the U.S. since 1997. He lives in Pennsylvania. Uh, he uh, kind of has uh, is old and ha is not uh, in the best health today. But uh, what he done over his lifetime, uh, starting in the 70s in Turkey, is to put kind of the, this blueprint that Stiknosi put down with these three problems and three uh, ways to address them into practice. So he, he started an education campaign uh, dialogue and charitable work with the, with the education. And again, in the 70s, uh, this is now uh, 30 years uh, in, into the Republic, uh, but uh, there's still lots of conflict. Pe uh, people don't, again, the Anatolian people, they don't, don't trust uh, the establishment. They don't participate in, 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 the, in the government. They don't send their kids to school, especially universities. And those who end up in universities, they are uh, fighting each other literally uh, between the fascists and the communists. Uh, it's not a good time to be in Turkey at this time. Uh, and uh, Gülen basically starts saying, well, uh, uh, the idea being, uh, yes, the, the state is oppressing us, but if you want to stay, change the state, if you don't like what you're seeing, uh, be part of the change and do it better. So he's uh, recruiting uh, more people from, from the conservative backgrounds to actually go and uh, finish high school, get into universities, be educated, and uh, be part of the system and change the system from within, if you will. Uh, so the and uh, yeah, so the one of the ideas that uh, uh, he came up with or based on site nurses uh, thinking is to come up with schools where we would uh, educate balanced uh, individuals. He calls them two-winged, uh, uh, people who have not just one wing that uh, might be religious education, or the other wing means the secular scientific education, but both. Uh, if you have one you, and miss the other, you, you might understand uh, the religion, but you cannot participate in, in the world. And if you have the scientific knowledge, uh, but don't have the moral underpinning of, of a religious tradition, then you, uh, it's, it's not clear what you will use that power of, of that scientific knowledge and how you would use it. So he is... Uh, putting forward this idea that we need to establish schools where we can have both. And this doesn't mean uh, religious schools, actually the first schools he starts. Uh, these are scientific schools uh, and uh, teaching foreign language and uh, just regular curriculum. The, the main difference is that uh, he's promoting these for people who don't consider themselves as part of the system and are afraid of sending their kids to schools because they are afraid that if I send my kid to school, uh, they will they will lose their faith or something like that. And uh, this uh, was accepted by the Turkish people very quickly. Lots of people started participating in this movement and uh, put money together, started popping, schools started popping up all over the place and pretty quickly they became uh, the best schools wherever they, they, they started it. 
and 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 then soon after uh, the second item about the dialogue uh, in Turkey again we have this huge division from uh, political right to uh, left for religious uh, very secular again who people who believe religion should be staying in your home you shouldn't even wear a headscarf outside uh, they don't want to see any sign of religion anywhere uh, they, they they view that as uh, as uh, imposing your religion on on others uh, where other people they, they they basically want to have a religious state if you will and we have all these people trying to live in the same society and everybody's pulling the country into different directions and uh, arguing and fighting and uh, and then uh, again the the Gulen started uh, promoting dialogue. We also have a religious minority, although very small uh, Christian population, especially in Istanbul and Jewish population uh, who have been there from, from the very beginning since the Ottoman times. And uh, they are basically being ignored and again, oppressed in, uh, as, a, as, a, as a minority. And he starts uh, reaching out to these minorities. Uh, which didn't go that well with uh, much of the society uh, back back when we first started this. So, as I said at the beginning, hizmet is just uh, just means service. That's what people who participate in this civil society movement uh, call themselves. And uh, the motto I have it at the bottom: uh, Don't complain, do it better. So people complaining about schools, not uh, kind of people uh, or their children losing their faith or uh, the school quality is low, then then build a better school and educate better. Uh, universities, they are too uh, left-leaning, right-leaning, too political, too much fighting going on, then establish a university that is not like that. Uh, you don't like the quality uh, of service you get in the hospital, well, come together and establish hospital and run it better. You don't like what you see on the TV, it's corrupting your kids, you don't like uh, the moral values displayed, then start your own TV station and uh, make it better. And uh, same thing for newspapers, charities, business associations, and uh, I mean, to this day, this, uh, what, what has been accomplished in Turkey uh, as the largest civil society initiative. And all these, uh, if you were in Turkey 20 years ago, go to any city and ask what are the three best schools. Uh, one or two of them will be uh, schools that were started by Hizmet. Uh, hospitals, same way. The largest selling newspaper, daily newspaper selling uh, all over the uh, country Zaman was established by by Hizmet. Uh, the largest selling English newspaper again was started by Hizmet. Uh, the largest uh, ch international charity uh, that was not sponsored by the government uh, was started by Hizmet. And you can basically just go down the list uh, and uh, that's. Uh, at one point, it, it, it basically doing everything and anything that people uh, come together and pool their money and their talent and uh, try to solve different problems of, of society. I have to do this with the mouse. So uh, this was all happening within Turkey. Uh, and what changed? This and made the movement international was the collapse of the uh, of the Soviet Union. Uh, so, uh, if you are familiar with, uh, with Central Asian countries, uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, all these countries, they are Turkic people. Uh, they, uh, they like Turkmenistan. It's already in the name. Even uh, other Azerbaijan is uh, is speaking pretty much the same language as we speak. All the other ones are uh, kind of uh, long, uh, the relative of Turkish, it's very similar language, very similar culture. So uh, when when the system collapsed and all of a sudden there's no government there, 
anymore. Uh, Gulen encouraged people to basically go there and start schools because uh, we have all this know-how now from, from Turkey establishing really great schools uh, who, and these schools, the education were at the highest level uh, where the kids could just graduate from a high school in, in a town in Turkey and go to the best universities anywhere in the world and uh, and be successful there. So uh, he encouraged people to do so and uh, amazingly people did. Uh, people just left their families and got on a plane and went to a place that they never been before, nothing there. And uh, they don't know what to do. They don't know whom to do it with. And it's not like they have uh, the backing of a state or something like that where you have lots of money either. Uh, they just go there and many, many of them struggled there for years, but managed to start school here and there. Uh, and uh, once that, once it become clear that this does work actually, uh, where you can just send uh, a handful of people to a, a country that you don't know anybody in, but those people, really dedicated people would work day and night, find some place to start a school, convince people that they can do a good job in educating their kids and gain their trust and then get them to register to the, to your school uh, and do this all with um, minimal uh, monetary su support. Uh, it, 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 it was just an amazing thing. Today, there are schools that were started by the Hizmet movement in 180 different countries, uh, pretty much all over the world. Uh, in all continent uh, continents, maybe except Antarctica, uh, and the, the, again, the idea is to uh, serving people is serving God, and uh, education uh, and ignorance is our number one enemy, and the number one solution to that is education. Uh, and then uh, again, this it's it's that it's a religiously motivated group. Uh, it stems from Islam, so when you hear Gulen speak, he's, he's using uh, all of the religious context that this is a religious duty for, for you to do, your, uh, and that's what motivated people to do all this, go to different places and uh, live there uh, for many decades and basically become part of that community and, and uh, raise their own kids there. Uh, so that's what his met uh, was about, and then the dialogue part uh, it took a little more convincing than the education part. Uh, when you tell people, "Hey, we need education," uh, it, it 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 just registers quickly. But when you tell them, "Hey, uh, we need to reach out to religious minorities," or you need we need to be in uh, conversation with uh, people from other faith traditions, uh, especially when you live in a country like uh, where everybody everybody you meet is practically uh, pretty much a Muslim, that doesn't register as quickly. Uh, but then people who traveled to different places and all over the world, they started dialogue organizations, and that's how uh, the dialogue institute here is basically part of that movement. Uh, and again, this is uh, there is also it's not just interfaith dialogue; it's a dialogue within society in Turkey, where uh, people who would normally not be in the same room came together, and uh, they managed to come up with common terms they uh, can agree on and would sign declarations. So people who are fighting, literally fighting would be in the same room signing declarations that they can both agree on. Uh, and again, all this was uh, initiated by the Hizmet Union. Uh, that takes us to around 2016, uh, which was the peak of uh, the influence Hizmet had in Turkey. And if you uh, remember the 2016 there, uh, was a coup attempt, uh, if you can call that. Uh, and the very, I mean, pretty much the same night, uh, around 3 a.m., uh, 
the, the, the president came on TV and uh, declared this as a blessing from God. It's, it's a coup attempt. It's somehow he declares this as a blessing of God. And the next morning, tens of thousands of people were fired from their government jobs and uh, the government started arresting people. And pretty soon, Hizmet was declared uh, a terrorist organization, an armed terrorist organization. And that's still the case. Uh, and uh, still today, there are tens of thousands of people from the Hizmet movement in prison. And uh, the reason they are in prison is, is they're, they're ridiculous reasons like uh, having the wrong messaging app on your phone or having uh, a bank account at a uh, nationally approved government backed uh, bank that was started by the Hizmet movement or being on the board of a charity or providing aid to a charity or uh, any, any, any relations you have with, with the Hizmet movement, which was very hard not to have uh, given that uh, his met was so much involved in it. Uh, you would be basically associated with his met and declared a terrorist. Uh, all these, uh, they were, I don't know how many, dozens of universities, hundreds of schools, uh, many, many charities, uh, all these news outlets and newspapers, they are all in it, uh, private property by the government and shut down. Uh, or converted to uh, or sold to uh, or basically given away free to, uh, to the, 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 the people who are closer to the government and they are now running them. And uh, it came to a point where they were, uh, and this still is happening occasionally, hijacking people from other countries. So it's not just you're not safe in Turkey, you're not safe in uh, if you're in a country where the law is not. Uh, uh, the, it, it's not the safest place uh, and it doesn't really have to be the safest like uh, I remember b a man being uh, kidnapped while walking on the street in Kosovo uh, he, he's walking with his wife and they have a, a baby in, in, in a stroller car stops by takes the man uh, a couple two men just grab the man put him in the car and next time you know he's in a Turkish prison uh, and that's it. Uh, so that's still going on. It's been uh, now seven, eight years since I've been to Turkey because I, I can't go uh, because of, of, of this, what, what's going on there. Uh, and uh, just yesterday, uh, there was this news. I don't think it's going to change anything, but just to give you an idea. Uh, so first I should say, you know, uh, Hizmet is declared a, a terrorist organization, an armed terrorist organization. And uh, think about all the things, all this, all this property, all these uh, uh, universities, uh, all these schools uh, all over Turkey, they're all being confiscated. Uh, newspapers run down, uh, all uh, all these charities closed, and not just that. There are people who who would support his met, and I mean to do all that, you have to have some uh, serious money coming in, and that was uh, a, a big chunk of the Turkish population would contribute to this because they were seeing the the positive outcomes from this, uh, and all. And if you are one of those major contributors as a businessman, for example. Uh, you are now an uh, enemy of the state and all your belongings are taken away from you as well. Uh, so all this is happening over the past seven years. Uh, forget anybody from the movement uh, using a R, or using arms. Uh, not a single person has taken a single stone and thrown at, at the police or the people who are implementing these uh, uh, these so-called decisions by the by the judiciary and taking over the places. So uh, there is no armed uh, terrorist group. Uh, but just yesterday, the, 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 the European Court of Human Rights uh, finally uh, gave it, uh, 
decision on one person, uh, this Yuxel Yachinkaya, who was a teacher, uh, and he was uh, arrested and put in prison for again this. This is this Bylock app, which is basically an encrypted messaging app. If you have that on your phone, you're automatically a criminal. Uh, doesn't matter. It's it's an app that it, that you can download from the App Store, uh, and anybody has it. That's or that's proof you will end up in prison. Uh, or if you if you have a, again a bank account uh, in the in the wrong bank, and uh, the, the European Court basically said, well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, you cannot you cannot be convicted for being a part of a group just because you are supporting his map doesn't mean you are a criminal. Uh, just because you have an app doesn't mean you are uh, you are a criminal or you committed a crime. So. Uh, that is good news, but uh, again, at the same time, while this is happening in Turkey, every day uh, they they find new people to put in prison. Uh, people are dying in prison. There are some suspicious deaths. Uh, people being tortured. Lots of people try to escape Turkey, and they are now there are thousands of families in Greece who managed to get out of Turkey into Greece, but now they are stuck there. They cannot go anywhere else, and basically, there are refugees there. Uh, same thing with Iraq and other neighboring countries. So that's the current situation. While all this is going on, people around the world that are part of the Hizmet movement are still trying to continue our dialogue efforts or education efforts. Uh, you might have heard about uh, the Harmony schools here in, here in Austin or in Texas, the largest uh, charter school network in Texas is Harmony. This was started uh, again uh, by people from, from the Hizmet movement. Uh, again, better education. Uh, and there are similar uh, schools all over the US and all over uh, all over the world, pretty much. You can find uh, schools in, in advanced countries like the US or Germany or, or Japan, or in the poorest countries in Africa or in Asia and uh, any, anything in between. So I'm not sure if I've taken too much time, but that's all I had prepared right now. Did I put everybody to sleep? No, no, this was really, <laughs> really insightful. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I was just looking for my mute button. I'm so sorry. Um, so for everybody that's new here, um, this is Inside Islam. So we like to utilize this platform as a way to showcase that, you know, Islam is diverse and inclusive and whoever recites the kalima is Muslim. And, you know, ultimately only Allah can judge what is in people's hearts, right? Um, and so it's super important that we take this time to you know, discuss unity and the beauty of diversity um, and the importance of groups like Muslim Space and the Raindrop Foundation who welcome all kinds of people and bring them together and are working on common projects to help us see each other's goodness and common purpose. Um, so with that being said, I did ask uh, earlier in the group if anybody had any questions to go ahead and post them in the chat. But if you have any questions outside of Mario, who has one, um, please continue to post the questions. Um, Mario did ask uh, Dr. Arslan, uh, does this yeah, movie have a large following in Europe or the US? Yes. So uh, again, it started in Turkey and uh, it, it is based in Turkey, but then uh, even before 2016, before these uh, uh, persecutions started, people were moving all over the world and for various purposes, again, starting schools, starting dialogue, or just finding better places to live, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a large uh, population in Germany. And Germany is, uh, uh, I was born in Germany, by the way, uh, from wow. Turkish parents. Uh, uh, Turks in Germany are, are like Mexicans here. Uh, lots of, of them uh, came there in the 60s and 70s as workers. Uh, so there are lots of Turkish people, uh, now third, fourth generation Turks, if you will. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, and after 2016, again, 
uh, anybody who has any means of getting out of the country what was getting out many ended up in germany because again that's the country in europe that we have the closest relations with as turkey many ended up here here in austin we bought population more than doubled since since this happened and austin is a relatively unknown place uh in turkey uh i mean you wouldn't find many people who say i i, I want to go abroad let, let me go to austin texas it's yeah. not it's not going to be on the top 10 or top 20 list of places to go uh it's relatively unknown but mm -hmm. even here we have doubled more than doubled the number of families we had here again uh most people who came in the last six seven years were basically escaping persecution but uh, yes germany is uh, definitely a big center uh where where you will see turks in general and then people from the hizmet booming in particular I love that. Um, Zainab did ask if you were able to share a little bit more about how the Raindrop Foundation formed. Yeah, the Raindrop, actually, I, I came here in January 98, and there was already a Raindrop Foundation. Uh, so it's it's an established uh, organization. The original intent was to bring uh, people uh, from our community together. And I remember when we first came here, when I first came here, again, in January 98, uh, we were a handful of students, mostly students here in Austin, a uh, couple families. Uh, there were a few in Houston, a few in Dallas, a few in College Station, again, mostly coming for graduate studies and such, so mostly young couples. Uh, and for Eid, for we, we, we would actually uh, find the closest weekend and we would pick a city and everybody from our community would go to that city and we would basically have a picnic together uh, because, I mean, everybody together would uh, would be just a handful of people. <laughs> uh, so, and th those uh, organizations, they were basically handled by this Raindrop Foundation. Uh, that So it was mostly uh, geared towards our own needs. And still today, uh, Raindrop, the main mission is to uh, organize study circles where, where we uh, uh, come together and uh, do religious education for adults, where we have Saturday schools for kids, where we teach them, uh, again, or the, the, the Quran and uh, or culture and or language and other things that we like our kids to learn, uh, uh, and uh, come together for, for religious holidays, uh, national holidays. Uh, so it's Big aspect of Raindrop is uh, kind of uh, addressing all needs as a, as a, as a community here, and then the second aspect is well uh, is basically introducing our culture to fellow Americans and inviting them to uh, participate in cooking classes where we teach them Turkish cooking classes or, or Turkish language or whatever it is related to the Turkish culture or uh, in general. So that's. That's what the raindrop is. Uh, uh, and all of that raindrop, uh, right after the, right after September 11th, we started the Dialogue Institute, which uh, which was gearing more about uh, towards interfaith dialogue. When we first founded it, it, it was called the Institute for Interfaith Dialogue. Uh, and we were actually doing interfaith dialogue before that, because as I mentioned, uh, interfaith dialogue is a key part of the of the teaching of Islam and uh, the, 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 I, I love the way you say it, uh, diversity, we believe diversity is intentional, it's it's not accidental, it's it's God's intent. And uh, uh, as, as many verses in the Quran say, we, we, it, it's, it's a test for us if we embrace it and can come together uh, and uh, kind of benefit from this beautiful diversity rather than see that as a, a, a as something negative. Uh, so we, we embrace diversity. And uh, we were doing dialogue uh, on a smaller scale. We had, a, uh, we still have it actually. Uh, on UT campus, we have a dialogue student association, uh, which does uh, interfaith dialogue and similar organization all over the university campuses around Texas and neighboring states. Uh, 
but then September 11 happened and we thought, well, this is in time to reach out to uh, everyone on a, on a bigger scale. So people from different cities came together. Uh, we already, everybody was already on board with interfaith dialogue. There was not much convincing you needed to do. And we came together and started the Dialogue Institute, which was 20 something years ago, 21 years ago now. And that's been going on uh, since then as well. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that insight. Um, I wanted to ask, what are some of the projects and uh, like current things that Raindrop is focusing on for the rest of the year? Do you have anything that's happening, any events? Yes, uh, events-wise, uh, our next big event uh, is as a Dialogue Institute, we have our annual Friendship and Dialogue Dinner, which is coming up October 29th. Uh, hope to see some of you here there. Uh, I'll, uh, once we have, uh, I think we'll have a flyer out with email shortly, and I hope some of you are part of our mailing list. If not, uh, you can get in touch with me and I can add you there. Uh, that's going to be uh, October 29th. We're trying to put together, we used to do these very nice uh, large Turkish festivals. Uh, again, uh, the, the, this things going on in Turkey did affect us and it's still affecting us because uh, again, lots of people are in prison and their families are in need. So we uh, try to support them from here as much as we can. And we are not talking about 100 families, 1,000 families. We are talking about tens of thousands of families uh, who are in dire need. And uh, they are basically, uh, they're not allowed to work. People who are in prison, they are already in prison. People are outside. They, nobody would give them work because then the government would come after you. It, it's at a point where if you take one bag of groceries and take it to your neighbor who, who you know is associated with his met, the next day police will come to your door and will take you for aiding terrorists. Uh, so again, we are trying to uh, do our best to support uh, people in Turkey. That obviously has an effect on things we can do and we have not done a proper Turkish festival in many years. but. We are uh, working on uh, bringing it back again. Uh, and we, uh, I don't know if you know uh, how many of you know, but we used to have a center uh, at uh, Palmer Lane in Mopac, uh, which we closed right at the beginning of the pandemic. And now we have a new center up in North uh, in, in Round Rock. Uh, so we'd be discussing whether we should do it there or find a more central location and do it there. So that's uh, coming up, uh, hopefully once we have it figured out, I'll, I'll you know, let you guys know. Thank you so much. And do you have a link or anything that you can share in the chat so that anyone could look up the event that's coming up? And um, and I'm so sorry about all the things that are happening in Istanbul. Yeah. It's, it's really unfortunate. It is it is really sad, Zainab correct, yeah, to learn about this sort of persecution that's happening. Um, Thank you for sharing this kind of like information with us. It's definitely important to know. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out to me. And can, uh, can I can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Sure. Okay. Um, I was wondering where is this uh raindrop you're talking about? Uh, round rock. It's uh, no, no, on Gettysburg no. School Road. Ra raindrop. You were talking about some little while ago. The Raindrop Foundation? What, what yeah. are you talking about? Uh, yes. The Raindrop Ra Foundation? It's yes. based here uh, in Round Rock. Round Rock, okay. Uh, and yeah. also, I'm very happy to say that my grandson is going to the Harmony School. <laughs> that is that great. Any idea? All, all my kids all my kids go to the yeah. Harmony School. Which one? Yeah, Which I mean, one is he going to? Uh, the one in Cedar Park? Cedar Park, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, my mine. Uh, I have. Uh, I had four. Now I have three kids. One graduated uh, here at the uh, School of Endeavor on six twenty. Uh, that's the yeah. one my kids go to. Yeah, six twenty. That's where. Yeah, that's where. That's where uh, uh, he goes to. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same school. No, I, I have something to tell him about. <laughs> yeah. 
there we go. Very, <laughs> very good. Very, very nice presentation. I really enjoyed it. And when you started out, you. I was so happy. Oh, my God, somebody's doing all this, this. And, and then all of a sudden, the whole thing changed. <laughs> we are still doing it. That's the amazing part. About I know, it. but I'm I mean, sorry uh, for all, all the people, families. Or, or yeah. families and friends we are being persecuted and uh, put, put yeah. in prison and uh, people still here organize annual friendship and dialogue dinners, which I find uh, amazing. I mean, I'm just uh, yes. in awe of this it community is. to yes. come together and spend all this effort for dialogue. Yes. So it's not... We, we, it's not something that oh yeah it's nice to do let's do it it's something that you do even when you have a knife to your throat it's that important to us yes uh, my, and my, we I literally be, have a knife to our throat <laughs> uh, i will be praying for all of you and i would like to have a little Inshallah. bit more uh, information on the raindrop okay okay sure. yeah thank you so much jazakallah uh, I'll, I'll share uh, thank okay. you okay yes jazakallah Thank you, Nasreen. Uh, Zainab, you have a question? Yeah, more so of a comment. I just wanted to express my gratitude to Dr. Ursulan for at short notice giving us this wonderful presentation. Just wanted to say that I've been um, attending Raindrop events for almost, it seems like 10 years now, and I have found them to be the most generous, kind, welcoming, caring people that I have ever met always including others, okay. always always focused on education, on learning, on making things better. So I really like what you said about the motto of Hizmat is that don't complain, make it better. I feel like we should write yeah. that on our walls. So thank you so much <laughs> for doing the hard work that you do. And I really, really appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. Only with the support of people like you. Thank you, Zainab. Are there any other questions? Anybody else want to pop on and ask anything? We've got a really amazing, you know, person talking today. We've got a wonderful uh, program, and I'd love to be able to get any other amazing insights. Uh -huh. While people are thinking, I can mention uh, what we do. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, important times of the year for us, as for many Muslims, is Ramadan. And uh, just being a Muslim in Ramadan is already busy. Uh, uh, all the all the preparation for iftar and then tarawih and then the next day, get up at night. Uh, but we managed to uh, include this in, in, in our dialogue efforts as well. Uh, what we do in Ramadan, um, if you're not familiar, we, we reach out to churches and synagogues and temples and tell them we like to break our fast uh, at your place with your community. And uh, last year we went to around uh, 40 different churches and uh, we prepared the food and we invited our community, their in, in community in their space and when it's time at eight something eight eight thirty p.m., we do a little uh, we we do a little presentation about Ramadan and uh, what fasting is about, what it means for us, uh, and then we do a call to prayer, and then uh, we break our fast with fellow Christians in a church. Uh, and this is for many people the first time they learn about fasting or Ramadan, it's not for some people the first time to meet or sit down with, with a Muslim. And uh, again, uh, this was a big thing we were doing before the pandemic and uh, Alhamdulillah, now we ramped it back up to pre-pandemic levels. But this Ramadan, and this next Ramadan, hopefully we will uh, reach out to even more places. And uh, I would love to see more people from, from this community join us there as well uh, we generally ask for for a room where we can do the uh, maghrib prayer together uh, right after we break our fast together uh, and then we try to catch the next uh, next uh, uh, tarabi prayer prayer at, at whichever mosque we we like to go to I'm sure that we would love to get more information on it and be able to join. This sounds absolutely lovely. 
I'll, I'll uh, get you the link. Uh, I think probably the best uh, one would be the Facebook page and or dialogue website. Uh, I'll get it to you and we can distribute it to everyone. 100%. That would be phenomenal. Are there any other questions or any other comments anyone wants to say? I guess I just had one thought is that is um, dialogue and raindrop kind of used interchangeably or dialogue is more the um, the side that is focused on actual dialogue and raindrop is focused on the other cultural and social educational events? Yeah, so the history is like uh, like this. Raindrop was again, uh, the, or cultural organization or community organization that we that was started before I came here. I just continued. And uh, this was one organization, one nonprofit based in Houston. And then we had chapters in all the different places, including Austin. We were basically acting as a chapter of this uh, organization, nonprofit organization that's based in Houston. Uh, and then uh, the Dialogue Institute came to be, again, we started it here in Austin and then pretty quickly moved the headquarters to Houston because there were just more people there who could help with it. Uh, and then it, again, it was one organization, the Institute of Interfaith Dialogue with chapters all over uh, Texas and neighboring states. Uh, but then uh, today it, with, with the growth and we have now people in different cities who can take care of it. So uh, every city now has their own or separate organizations. Uh, in Austin, we have one nonprofit and we are using those two names uh, as DBAs, doing business as. It's like our brand. Uh, so uh, we have one nonprofit, profit 541c3 organization, but the two brands we are using is Raindrop and Dialogue Institute. So when you donate money to one, it's it's the same as donating to the other. Although when you donate to Raindrop, we use it for cultural side. If you donate to Dialogue, we use it for dialogue side. So we try to keep it and in separate, uh, the dialogue is more for dialogue events, for our outreach events and such. And Raindrop, we mostly use for Turkish cultural uh, events. But we are the same group, it's the same organization, it's the same board, it's the same people doing everything. So you can use it interchangeably. And this happens all the time. Wh whichever organization you are first exposed to, people tend to use that. So we, we organize an event under the dialogue umbrella, but uh, we invite somebody to speak and they talk about raindrop because that's what they know or the other way around. So it doesn't really matter at this point. It's the same organization. Thank you so much for explaining. No problem. Thanks for asking. All right. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Arslan, for, you know, coming on to our Inside Islam um, little event here and sharing all this information. It's been such a pleasure and I really appreciate all the info that you shared today. We're looking forward to seeing you hopefully in the future for some of our own events as well and to see you at some of yours. Thank you so much. I'm um, following you on your mailing list and love the things that Muslim Space is doing from, from day one. And yeah, let's keep the work up. There is lots of work that needs to be done by uh, by, by us, by Muslims, mm -hmm. uh, to show the true face of uh, Islam to everyone, uh, especially here in Texas. Uh, it's it's on us, not on them. A hundred percent. I completely agree. Completely. All right. Well, with that being said, guys, we'll go ahead and uh, end this meeting. But thank you again for anyone and everyone who did join with us today. And, and thank you again, Dr. Arslan. Seriously, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam.